Welcome back, Jeremiah from Babylon Backyard. Thank you for joining for the second part of the build. I'm glad you came back for this. You don't want to miss anything. This video, we are going to jump right into getting this thing finished up. We've got a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get this thing attached to the wall, make sure that it doesn't come away from the wall. And then we will get this outside wall hooked up and then the other wall hooked up over there. So after we get this thing all attached and put together, leveled out on the ground, we are going to then anchor it into the ground. So I'll show you how we anchor it to the ground. Then we're going to sheet the inside with plywood. We're going to dig down deeper so we can get more volume in this pond. And uh, then we're going to get the thing lined up and capped off before we get the fish in here. The first thing we have to do is actually anchor this into the concrete. This wall needs to be mounted to the concrete foundation. So I, if it's not, when the weight is in here, it is going to push this wall and this whole wall would start to try to bow outward. Same reason we put all the extra support that way, the wall will try to push outward. So by anchoring this thing down with these concrete bolts, we are ensuring that that doesn't happen to that wall. Now that I'm getting this wall wall finished framing up, all of my anchors are in place. So the next thing I gotta do is get the walls installed. What I've done is I've created this frame on both sides of this board that's kicking off of the ground here. So this is bolted to the concrete and then it's going to slip through here and attach on both sides and I'll have another one that I'm gonna throw a lag bolt in up here and then it will come up here to the top and attach. But the other really important part is making sure everything is super level. This ground down here has to be really level to ensure that the top of the wall is really level. Water doesn't lie. When you're not level, the water will reach a peak on one side and then it might be dipping on the other side really low. And I don't want to really lose any water by not having it level. We're going to go ahead and get this thing finished up and show how we're attaching it. And then we'll also show how we're leveling the rest of it. I already have been leveling this gravel out. Okay, so I'm going to install these lag bolts into the top part here. And I'm using a drill for the minor diameter of that lag bolt. So it's just slightly larger than the minor diameter. And then a clearance drill. So this is a drill for the top plate so that this is not grabbing a hold of anything in that first plate and I'm just getting a hold of that second plate. This is how I'm going to anchor the walls to the floor. So it's just going to prevent that push away. So let's look how we do this. Okay. 
Okay, the next thing I gotta do is start digging out the inside here. I'm gonna go down three feet, so I'm digging another foot down below the, the wall. And this side over here, I'm not going to go that full depth. I'm going to be inserting a plate over here, a concrete plate or a stepping stone basically, because I'm going to have a 4x4 four four coming up through there and holding the center of the basically little catwalk thing that I'm building over here where the barrel filters are going to be sitting up here. So there's going to be a bunch of weight up here and I need the support to come across and support in the middle also. So somewhere in here, I'm going to start the ramp down to the three foot. got this thing dug out it's three foot most of the space except for that corner over there's closer to 40 inches it drops down a little bit over there I'm gonna put my pump at the lowest point over here that's going to feed back to the filter next thing is sheet this plywood around it and then we will um, get this thing lined up all right I got this eight foot sheet of plywood that's ripped into two so it'll be on both sides and then I've got a second piece of plywood that was ripped. I only need one half of the other side and then I'll just cut my four foot lengths. down and hits this is just extra protection. So I want a lot of protection on all the corners where there's gravel. I want multiple layers of protection here because this is that pad for the post to come up off of. When I get the pond liner in here, I'll start adding water before I even attach the pond liner and I'll push into all of those so I eliminate all those pockets. The pond liner should come up much higher even than the underlayment when I put that in there. Now the roughest thing that I have going on is this corner over here and that's because it is the lowest point of the 40 inches and it kicks up about a foot and then has a shelf, maybe not quite 6 inches, but that shelf kicks back to the corner and then we've got the, it's actually a little more than 2 foot from that, the dirt level right there to the top of here. Anyway, so that's the, the most messed up corner where the pump's gonna sit down there and there'll be another pump sitting up a little higher feeding some aquaponic stuff. We're gonna go ahead and start putting some water in here now. When we put the water in here, it'll push all this stuff down. Lowest point first, any excess will start pulling in and then it will come up onto the step, pushing against the walls of the step and then up onto the step, pushing down on that which would cause some more sag to pull down on this liner. Once it starts reaching up to this level here, that's when I can start pulling that liner and really pushing things into place up higher.
unfortunately, I did not hit a thousand gallons. I just made it to a, about 700 gallons. I'm still pretty happy with the size of the spawn. I wasn't that worried about hitting a thousand gallons. I just was more interested in having a lot of water for the away when I winter them in here or whatever else I put in here if I decided to do tilapia in this one. As they get too big for the, the IDC tote, I can move them into a larger space in the summertime. So I expose them with the IBC tote and this, I'm right, right about a thousand gallons full. It's just that this particular pond build only made it to 700 gallons. Let's finish it up though. We gotta go ahead and get the caps on here. We gotta get this stuff cut and pinned down the back of the, the pond. I'll make sure everything is nice and tight on the walls. Then I'll, I'll put my cap over on this side, trim all the excess, and uh, we'll be done. Okay, that's gonna have to do it for tonight. Uh, it's getting late, I gotta get inside and get this thing edited up so I can post tomorrow. That's how far I push this out. But the pond itself is done. We're gonna have to wait to get the fish in there. I've got a few other things I wanna get done, like the finishing work of the wall here. And then I'll move the fish over into the pond. And that'll be a different video. I'll have a video for it, so if you're interested in that, and seeing the progression of the fish from the last spring when I took them out of this tank here that was under the deck, put them into the pond. I'll be doing another update on my fish when I move them. Hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, obviously it's a little different than your situation. You might not be putting it against a wall like this. Um, but if you are doing something similar, hopefully you got some ideas. I was a little worried about this this whole thing holding and the walls not breaking out on me. Everything is holding really well though. Nothing looks like it's going to be a problem. Got a lot of work still to do with getting the filters set up and getting the pumps all running. We're going to be doing some vertical growing over this pond. I'll probably set up another at least one or two flood drain beds over here. Um, this is a greenhouse. We are growing food. It's not just meant to house fish. I'm just trying to use it as a multi-purpose space. That's all. And so far, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Hopefully you're having fun as well. If you are, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Don't miss any of the cool videos we have coming. We've got a lot of great stuff in the pipeline. Oh yeah, check out one of these other videos. All around me. See you in those videos.